How's it going, all you minties? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of collected editions. And join me today for my overview of the Faithless Slipcase Edition from Boom Studios. So, stay tuned. Welcome back, everybody. Now, before I even get this book out of its slipcase, I'm just going to go ahead and say that this book is absolutely mature audiences only. As a matter of fact, I can't even show you the cover and the back cover of the book. There is a deluxe edition that I believe comes out next week, if I'm not mistaken. Or no, actually this week. Uh, this book came out the last week of May. And then the deluxe edition that has a cover that can be shown is going to be available this week. So... Yes, this is going to be a pretty hard overview because of the content and the premise of the book. Uh, a lot of my viewers have asked me if I was going to do this overview, and I was like, yeah, sure. I like Brian Azzarello for the most part. I really enjoy Maria Lovett's art. <laughs> I had no idea what this book was going to be about. And the mature themes that are being used in here are about sex and violence. Uh, so if that stuff bothers you, by all means, you know, don't. Don't watch the rest of this video. I'm just warning people ahead of time. And no one is here to make fun of you. I respect everybody's opinion. Everybody's different. I have friends that can't read things like The Boys, can't read Berserk, can't read Preacher, can't read Spawn. And everybody has different religious beliefs and beliefs, so I respect that. As well as everybody should in the comment section. So, just keeping that in mind. Okay, now that I've said those things, let's go ahead and take a look at this. Uh, the one thing I did notice when I got the book is that it did come inside of a plastic wrap like most of these books do in the slipcase edition. However, you don't have a sticker on it like you do with Berserk where it says mature readers or other books uh, that have mature readers signs on the actual plastic. You do have it at the bottom though. It says mature readers right there. So, And the retail price of this one is $89.99. The retail price of the deluxe edition is $59.99. So you're paying about $30 for the slipcase. So, about the same thing happened to Something is Killing the Children and Once in Future. So, the thing that you'll notice are these symbols right here. Because this is talking about demons and witches and things like that. As well as lots of sex. So, I can't even show you what the artwork looks like in here before YouTube might end up pulling the video. Uh... So, I guess if people want it enough, I can put it on Patreon, you all decide, but definitely not here because YouTube has been really weird with the videos they have pulled down because of content. So, I'm going to talk about the premise of the book and show you the artwork that I can show you, but again, keep in mind this is mature content. This has a lot of sex. Most of the plot is about that. And then, yes, demons. Okay, let's open it up. All right, before we even look at the first page after the end sheets here, I've stated that this has blasphemous things in here. It's got sex. Um, it's also got suicide in here. And it's got animal uh, being harmed. So keep that in mind if any of those things bother you. I think I've covered it all. Uh, and again, no one is judging anybody for being offended by those things. Everybody's different. I think this is the only video I've done where I've had to start with the end sheets. But here's your pink end sheets. Kind of reminds me, honestly, of the gem and the holograms that Boom put out years back. No, it was IDW, I'm sorry. They came in like a Trapper Keeper looking cover. Brian Azzarello, Maria Lovett, and World Design doing the lettering. Published by Boom Studios. Uh, every chapter that is collected in here starts off with a Bible verse or a quote from Dante's Inferno. This borrows heavily a lot from different works, by the way. So only in the fever of creation could she recreate her own lost life. All right. So here we have the main character. And I think I can't even show you the next page, but you kind of get the idea. That is Faith. And Faith has two roommates. This is Aya and this is Max. And she's sitting here at the beginning of a coffee shop that is owned by this young lady right here. This is Ginny. And 
all four of them are friends. Now, at this coffee shop, she accidentally bumps into this young lady right here, and this is Poppy, and she spills her drink on her, and in a very unusual way, she takes the shirt off and puts another one on and goes on about her business, and Faith kind of follows her, and she runs into this guy that is trying to get her attention. He's like, hey, why won't you talk to me? And she's like, you know, just let me go. Faith steps in, and she's like, hey, why don't you leave her alone? So the two of them go on what seems to be a date, they're playing pool, and on the television they notice that this gentleman, well, not really a gentleman, but this guy that they ran into earlier that was bothering Poppy is committing suicide on live television. So the two of them get closer together and keep on going on this date. Poppy ends up uh, taking her around town and faith doesn't have any money so what she does this kind of gives you an idea of what kind of character she is what she does is she accidentally bumps into this guy and takes his wallet steals his wallet but instead of just taking the money she returns it back to the guy and the guy gives her a hundred dollar reward for being honest and returning his wallet back to him and then she shows poppy a little bit of her world and her world is just being obsessed with magic uh thinking that she can tap into this magical world. As a matter of fact, towards the beginning, her friends are kind of making fun of her for drawing all these symbols on a little sketchbook. The two of them get closer together, and they're about to go to a party, and Poppy's like, hey, why don't you come with me? And she's like, oh, I stink, I'm dirty. And she's like, well, go take a shower. Well, that leads into some fun time for Faith. I can't show you the cliffhanger of the first issue, uh, because, yes, they... They have sex. Poppy, in the last page, though, in this during the act of, uh, turns into a bunch of maggots. So not everything is right. Not everything is as it seems. So Faith wakes up, and Poppy is inviting her again to that party. She goes over to this party where she ends up meeting a bunch of new characters like Luis. Here, let me show you this guy right here, who takes a weird interest in her, almost saving her life. But that little meet cue, if you will, is interrupted by Faith. And this is all the artwork I can show you. And it's not like the artwork in here is very detailed or up-close shots, like, like you would see in pornography. But, I mean, it's things like you've seen in Manara books. It's, it's things that you've seen in the Krepax books. If you're a fan of those kind of erotic books, this is the same kind of stuff that you see there. And... The artwork actually reminds me of Manara, a little bit of Manara and Krepax, but mixed with like Eduardo Rizzo, who Brian Azzarello has worked with in the past, uh, some Paul Poop art in here. The story a little bit and some of the artwork in here kind of reminds me of Nana as well, the manga. So it is definitely inspired by a lot of different artist and in a lot of different works all right so let's get to the main plot though what exactly is going on is she tapping in the magic who is poppy why is she turning into maggots who's that guy louise well it all starts getting a little bit darker when she finds one of her roommates aya dead so she doesn't know exactly what happened to aya you as the reader get to find out exactly what happened to her it goes into some really dark territory and as i mentioned more and more characters are introduced through these pages here uh, as the story progresses. It's a little confusing because you don't know exactly if she is dealing with the devil, uh, Louise could be the devil, and Poppy could be his daughter, but it's almost incestual. Yeah, it gets really strange. I have to say, it is probably the weirdest thing I've read by Brian Azzarello. Still not the weirdest book I've read. I've read a lot of books in my time. If you've seen my library, you probably noticed some that I have. Um, but that's pretty much the premise. And it's all about her, you know, wanting to become an artist and also tapping into this magical world that kind of unleashes demons. And you have characters in here like Eve, like Louise, and you don't know who is who exactly, who's good and who's bad. And does it have to do with anything in the biblical times? Like, what, what exactly is it borrowing from that? So, lots of artsy things in here. As a matter of fact, that's what I wanted to talk about. Uh, the art. I love her art because it's both detailed and not detailed at the same time. And it leaves you to kind of fill in the blanks. Let me see if I can find 
Believe it or not, even though I have to censor just one little panel, this is probably one of the most cleanest pages uh, because I wanted to talk about the artwork. I think it really adds to the creepiness of the story when you're dealing with a demonic world in the fact that you have to kind of make up some of the missing details yourself. And I like that about it because some panels are so detailed, like from the little books on the floor to a little bit of dirt stains on the floor. And then there's things that aren't detailed. And whenever you see demonic images, it almost makes it worse than what is actually drawn in there, if that makes sense. It's like your eye fills in that missing blank. And I like that about the artwork. Um, and it's, honestly, there's a couple of pages here that kind of remind me of uh, Zoe Thorogood's art too. I like that there's not that much detail in the lines, but also you get the pages that just have immense details. And it usually has to do when Faith is painting something or creating something. Uh, the ending of this book is, is <laughs> it's odd. It's uh, like the story began and I'll, I'll be honest, I was not digging it at first. I was like, oh, I don't like any of the new, the, the characters being introduced through here. By issue three, I kind of got into the mystery. Okay, what's going to happen? Because this collects the three Faith list books so you have faithless one faithless two and faithless three each one of them were six issues long so it's 18 issues collected in here so that is a total of 496 pages collected in this book let me i mentioned paul pope being an inspiration and you can definitely tell this is his art right here on maria lovett's art but this is the main covers they're all the way in the back i can't even show you some of the main covers just because yeah not just nudity, but sexual acts. And maybe some people are like, oh, so it's like hentai. No, it's not Not really. Like I said, it's not like detailed or grotesque. Uh, but definitely sexual acts in here. You get to see all kinds of appendages, if you will. And lots of it. I don't know how many times I need to stress that. Whenever they're not having sex, they're talking about the art world. And then, of course, demons. But man, there's some beautiful artwork in here. Just making sure I can show these. Big fan of her art, man. Even some of the variant covers I can't show, but these are some I can show here. Here's a J. Lee piece. I've always enjoyed his art too. He has a really creepy style that fit perfectly with that Dark Tower book. All right, let's talk about the build of this. So all the way in the back is about the authors and the pink end sheets. The book, at least my copy, fooled me into thinking it had a ribbon, but what it is, it's this excess glue right here. I just put a little too much glue, so it kind of made this glob of stuff. You can I, well, I'll be taking that out, but I thought it was a ribbon at first because some of these books do come with ribbons, uh, but it is sewn binding. Here's what the eye looks like, and I know some people had problems with their once in future books, so that's why I wanted to make sure this one was okay. Outside a little glob of glue, it looks fine. It looks to be holding strong, even if I cut that little piece off. It's not going to affect the binding. It doesn't look like it's coming apart. So I saw some people send me some of their once and future binding, like their eye, and it was coming apart. Uh, but this one looks to be intact. But that's it. That's all I can say other than, man, that artwork is beautiful. <laughs> I was about to say that, as they say, is that. Like, I normally they would close the book, and then I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. Can't show the cover. That, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsors. If you're in Europe and you're interested in buying these books, definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices, flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all EU countries, emails answer within 24 hours, waltzcomicshop.com, and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order over 40 euros. That's Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ding! CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. 
And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, page count, and build of this book. Let me know in the comments down below if you have picked it up, if you're passing on it, if you're a fan of Brian Azzarello or Maria Lovett, and you have to have this book if you haven't read it. And yeah, if you read it, what you think about the story, how you felt about that ending. So if you have any questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe. Oh, and yeah, if you want to see an uncensored version of this, uh, let me know and we can put it on our Patreon. But... Everyone, stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.